And we are live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream here on the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Um, it is Monday. It is a film stocked live and the first film stocked live in two weeks. I missed last week because I was on vacation on Monday, so I didn't do a live stream. However, I still had a regular Q&A, but we're back with a film stocked live show. The question today, what was the best movie of the summer? question summer movie season is pretty much winding down to me it's always been like may to august so that's the question i ask everyone go ahead and drop in the comments in the chat in the live chat i should say drop the movie um of the summer in your opinion hit that like button if you guys are in here and i actually totally forgot to post on my instagram usually i do that right before i go live so we're gonna do that live right now you guys are getting a little behind the scenes on that so i'm gonna do the little camera flip and we're gonna pose for the camera there you go. Live and in person. You guys saw how I do the behind the scenes thing. So now I got to go get the link and then I will dive right into these questions. But how's everybody doing? Let me know in the chat. Um, what have you guys been watching lately? What are you excited to watch soon? Are you going to see Gran Turismo this week? Have you seen Blue Beetle? Let's talk about all that. And of course, again, let me know uh, in the chat your movie of the summer. I'll get through all that. We'll discuss that. We'll get into a Q&A thing after, of course. Um, and Super Chat is the way to go to guarantee I get your question, comment, concern. If you got something you are dying for me to see, if you just want to support the channel, anything goes a very long way via Super Chat. All right, let me go ahead and say join here. Throw this up on the Instagram. We should be golden. So put this right here. Boom. And then I'm going to say live on YouTube now. You guys know the drill. All right. It is on the Instagram story. Cool. Let's dive into this thing. Let's 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 do it. So let's see. <laughs> Taco Bell and Tobin Bell and Billy the Puppet and KFC and Wendy's and Burger King and Ghostface and Adrian Peterson and Pizza Hut are all in here. So welcome in. <laughs> One of the longest running inside jokes ever of the channel. I see Network 98's in here. I think Network 98's responsible for all that. Uh, the inside jokes. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah, the fast foods have arrived. Okay. Ian says, across the Spider-Verse without a doubt movie this summer. Might go see it again. Any, any day other, any, let's see. Any other summer movies that came out you suggest to go see with a group of friends? Yeah, so I would suggest, honestly, <laughs> well, see, a lot of them, that's the best, like, go with your group of friends. It's like a fun Spider-Man movie. There's action, there's heart, there's comedy. Uh, Oppenheimer, <laughs> I mean, Oppenheimer's just, uh, I don't know, like, I love Oppenheimer. It's my favorite of the year, probably, but I don't know if I would say, oh, get your group of friends together and go. Barbenheimer double feature would be one thing, right? Um, let me think of my list. No Hard Feelings would be a fun one. That's like a fun sort of uh, comedy film to see with some friends. And and Guardians 3, of course. Those would be the ones that I would say, like, go with your group of friends to see. But Barbenheimer, honestly, if you want to make an event with like a group of friends, Barbenheimer might be the way to go. That was a lot of fun. I did that with my friends personally. So I almost take down my entire setup just there for some reason. Um Oppenheimer easily the best movie of summer. I won't argue. I won't argue there. It's it's probably the movie of the year, honestly. Film Fanatics says Across the Spider Verse for sure. Uh, is that three <laughs> C films profile picture? Interesting. Uh, all right, or just a picture of three C films. What? Uh, let's see what's next. We got Star Court Food Court in the house. Shout out to the best mod around. Um, let's have a fun stream. No spamming in the chat. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. I second all that. And again, Super Chat's the way to go to guarantee I get to your question, comic concern. It's a huge way to help support. Taco Boy Studio says movie this summer, or my favorite is Guardians 3, but the best is Oppenheimer. That's a very fair point. They're both my one and two of the summer. I put out that video yesterday, so spoilers for that video. Um, however, those have to be the one and two, the one-two punch for me. There's a few other movies I want to talk about, though. Dial of Destiny, Elemental. Mission Impossible. Where did what a lot of these movies ended up going a little under the radar or disappointing even. So let's let's talk about that, honestly. Starcourt says my top three of the summer were Guardians 3, Talk to Me, Blue Beetle. I uh I got I gotta agree with you on Guardians 3. That's in my top three. Talk to me is right on the brink of my top three, and then Blue Beetle is in the lower part of mine. 
Um, I, I was pretty disappointed and underwhelmed by Blue Beetle, on, honestly. So it's a big, big letdown for me. Very unfortunate that I have to sit here and say that, but that's uh, the way I feel about it. Um, let's see. Oppenheimer and Spider-Verse. Oppenheimer, Spider-Verse, and Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beasts was uh, my second least favorite film of the summer easily. Um, we got a Barbie in here. Oppenheimer across the Spider-Verse in theaters. Which one would is more important to see in theaters? I think Oppenheimer would be a cooler theatrical experience than across. If you had to pick like which film, the way I'm answering this question is like which movie would would be a cooler theatrical experience from in terms of seeing the actual movie on a big screen? I think Oppenheimer. I think they both deserve those theatrical uh, viewings, but I would say Oppenheimer um, personally. Cosmo in the house, shout out Guardians 3 saying Oppenheimer. Andrew, hello there. How you doing, Andrew? Um, we got a super chat. Two super chats. Network 98 says, Chris, how do you feel about Chris Evans leaving the MCU to pursue his Taco Bell <laughs> movie career <laughs> with Craving and now him and Joe Keery BFFs? Yeah, so this is um a continued bit for those who don't know. The Taco Bell movie with Joe Keery and the craving and, and all of these things. This has been an ongoing ru uh, running gag, if you will, here on the channel for, I would say three years now. Impressive, frankly. Um, so shout out now 98. Thank you for the super chat. And my thoughts on this, uh, Joe Curie over Chris Evans. If I have to take one Joe Curie over Chris Evans. Um, I don't know. Chris Evans and eh, Joe Curie, better actor. I say, I see that with my full chest. Joe Curie is a better actor. Zach with a super chat saying, what up, what up, Zach? How the hell are you doing? Welcome in. Glad to have you here. Hope you're doing well on this Monday. I almost just dropped my phone. I had to grab it. My Spider-Man reflex is kicked in. <laughs> All right. So a lot of people are putting in their favorite summer movies. we got Barbie, Mission Impossible 7, Across the Spider-Verse, Guardians, Guardians or Across the Spider-Verse, Spider-Verse, Spider-Verse. Um, Oppenheimer, Guardians 3, Blue Beetle's an S-tier film. I, I mean, I strongly disagree, personally. Um, Blue Beetle or Flash in theater? Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle is a better movie than The Flash. I will die on that hill. It's it's more focused. It has a, a better lead character. It's just a better movie overall for various reasons. The, the main plot being one of them and its execution. The family dynamic water break excuse me um a lot of different factors playing to why blue beetle is the better movie the cgi for one being just a very surface level uh reason but blue beetle over the flash congrats on 1k on the podcast channel well thank you andrew and and i see the question here when is the unusual couple podcast celebration we're recording two episodes um very very soon one of them will go up wednesday one of them will go up the following week the the celebration will probably be the week after so not this week but next week and that'll be a real fun one. This upcoming episode will be all about Blue Beetle, uh, Percy Jackson news. And Cam and I went to a con yesterday. She'll talk about that. So it'll be more of a news. We'll do we'll do some fun games in there as well. Which, by the way, if you guys haven't subscribed, go uh, go subscribe. It's linked down below. Uh, Unusual couple podcasts. And then uh, next week probably will be the 1K celebration, which we are very much looking forward to filming and uh, continue growing the podcast channel, which you guys should check out if you haven't. It's a lot of fun over there. Cam and, and myself run the Unusual Couple podcast. Okay. Here's a good one. It's sort of summer movie related and, and, and some one of those movies that not a lot of people have said is their favorite. Little Mermaid, not hitting a billion. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are this. Number one, it's a good movie. I really liked it. I think it's one of the better Disney live action remakes. It took the, the original film. I think it enhanced a lot of that original movie with the character dynamics, the actual chemistry between the characters us as the audience actually caring about what's going on all of that was elevated in this movie i thought visually it looked well the music was 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 stunning especially while in charged waters but the, but thoughts on it now making a billion i am shocked i'm gonna be honest i'm shocked going into this year i said that's uh top three to four movie in terms of like ranking them based on likelihood of making a billion dollars little mary was high on that list i look at lion king i look at beauty and the beast those are the big hitter movies from that Renaissance era that made a billion in terms of the live action remakes. And I was, I was like, for sure it's a shoe in for a billion dollars. Not the case. I'm honestly, I'm shocked that it uh, underperformed a little bit, but 
it, it is what it is, I guess, you know, it'll, it could find a second life on, on Disney plus, but the thing is, I don't know people who do, who dislike this movie really. Most people I heard that saw the film personally and, you know, through YouTube that I've seen videos of people have typically liked this movie and it is a good movie. Give it a shot. If you haven't on Disney plus it's coming, I think two weeks from now on Disney plus. Um, but that's another reason the movie didn't hit a billion because I just said that the movie came out May 26th and it's on Disney plus June, July, August three months and a week later essentially that's the case with pretty much all the big movies guardians is on disney plus indiana jones will be on disney plus in no time uh what else hbo max or max is getting the flash these movies are in theaters for two months two three months people are going to just wait and watch them for free in their mind in the privacy of their own home so that's why i don't think it made a billion a uh, movie has to ha be huge uh, damn near controversial and like like barbie has all this not controversy but like uh people getting all up in arms about the view the viewpoints in the film uh a movie has to have like something like that to go something groundbreaking visually or just be a huge ip that's kind of how a movie has to make a billion dollars barbie has a blend of a lot of things going for it number one it's barbie barbie is huge like that name people are gonna go see it number two there's a crowd of people that are like uh, hate watching the movie because they're like oh it has the politics in it or whatever that i don't like and then other people supporting it for Oh, it has viewpoints I want to support. Blah, whatever. All right. People just people love to just politicize everything and, and make it a war. And that's so that that contributed to a lot of success. And then you've just got the fact that people want to see a Greta Gerwig movie, a Barbie movie. There's a lot of factors as to that movie success. Barbie. Um, Across the Spider-Verse will forever be my favorite film of the summer, my favorite film ever. You never know. Something could come along and take it down for you, but I'm glad to hear you love it. I love the movie as well. Guardians 3, I see a lot of people continue to say Guardians 3 is the best. It's a great movie. Um, let's see. It's Oppenheimer, the movie this summer. It's so much fun to hear the music in the end and in the beginning. Yeah, it's got a fantastic score. I've I it, honestly, when I edit, I have the Oppenheimer score on low volume to hone me in, really keep me focused. It's a great piece of music to listen to if you need background noise or something to almost guide you through your task. Oppenheimer scored by Ludwig Gornson. Pull it up on Spotify or whatever, you know, music service you use. Uh, it's 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 worth the purchase if you, you know, if you have if you what am I trying to say? If you don't have like a music streaming service, like, you know, Spotify or Apple, it's worth buying on, on its own. Honestly, how about strays? I actually, I'm not going to see strays. I know that's the Will Ferrell, uh, dog comedy movie. I'm skipping this one. I just don't have a desire to go see it. Does, I think it might've hit theaters last weekend or it's about to hit theaters. Uh, I haven't even seen any reviews of the movie. Like I haven't watched any, I'm probably going to skip this movie. <laughs> Uh, I just don't know. Right now, to be honest with every single one of you, uh, the movie theater is a seasonal thing to me at times. Like, I got to be in, like, the mood to go, and I'm just not in the mood to go to the movie theater right now um, at all. I just am not. I think it's because I went – so I go so much from May through July. August rolls around, and, like, unless it's a movie I really want to go see, I'm like, I don't know if I want to go see this movie. I'm serious. I th That's how I've always been. This is no surprise. I – I've talked about it in my movie theater thing. I get sort of anxious in theaters anyway. It's kind of a big event to go to the theater. So it's a movie I don't really want to see. Um, it can be become a chore, and I'd never want that to happen to me. So Mission Impossible. Make a good point here, Dead Reckoning Part 1. Um, very fair. I enjoy that movie quite a bit. It's in my easily my top 10 favorite of the year and one of the better of the summer. I see, I've seen a movie twice. It's got, of course, some riveting Mission Impossible action. Um, but it's not my favorite of the summer. I don't know if it's the movie this summer. It's a very good movie. Unfortunate when it released, I'll say that much. It ended up coming out right before Barbenheimer and it was doomed from the start at that point. Uh, that movie should have come out, honestly, prob probably in the fall or maybe now, maybe now or September, you know, where it's, there's less competition. I don't think Spider-Verse will win Best Picture. I just don't see it happening. Dow Destiny wasn't that bad, TBH. Ah, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, 
It was pretty mad to me. I wouldn't say it was bad, but it was pretty underwhelming. Um, this is the only year Mission Impossible 7 would have bombed. Very sad. Anyways, hope everyone's all well. Hope you're doing well too, David. Glad to see you in here. Um, I agree. I don't think, I think if it came out last year, it would have done better. If it, if it came out next year, it would do better. I think it was really poor timing to release it right before Barbenheimer in the middle of a slam packed summer. It's just, it's unfortunate. I think the next Mission Impossible will do better. Um, Dead Reckoning Part 2, I think, will outgross Part 1. I said it. Uh, can't go wrong with these picks. Elemental was the best anime movie since Moana and Frozen 2. Very underrated. I haven't watched it since theaters. I didn't love Elemental. Um, it's one of those maybe I'll give another chance when it comes to Disney Plus and have like a new appreciation for it. But I personally just found it to be no different than a lot of the other recent Pixar films in terms of being underwhelming, generic, meh. That's kind of the word I'd use to describe it. They didn't have it didn't have that magic to me um, that a lot of other classic Pixar films do. Is Talk to Me worth watching if you love independent films? Absolutely. It's worth watching in general, I think. It's a very well-made horror movie, and it's disturbing. It'll have you on edge for the entirety of its runtime, pretty much. Oppenheimer is good, but it's not a masterpiece. Some parts of the movie could have been shorter. I disagree. I I, I think it's a master masterpiece, personally. I don't even like to throw that word around a lot, but I do think that's what it is um lots of answers for guardians three and across the spider-verse and i'm not even going to argue with those those are all valid we got abby in the house what's good abby uh i'm currently watching the og snow white i haven't since i was a kid i haven't seen that movie in a few years i find it to be pretty boring <laughs> it's not bad but um never been one of my favorite disney films to be honest with you um it's got that you know hi ho the seven dwarves they, they got some classic moments for sure but uh, it's not never been one of my favorite uh, Disney animated films, personally. By the way, if you guys are in here, hit that like button. It helps out more than you know. we got 67 people in here, so be sure to hit that like button. If you're here on the replay, hit the like button as well. I know time zones and school for a bunch of people, all that. You know, if you can't join live and you're watching the replay, be sure to hit that like button. And um, Super Chat's the way to go to guarantee I get to your question, comment, concerns. a huge way to help support me and the channel. Anything goes a very long way. And um, let's continue on. Let's Let's keep on with it. We don't always agree on movies, but we can have actual discussions about it like normal people. This is true. Uh, Jacob and I have uh, agree on a lot, but disagree on a fair amount of movies and TV shows. Well, more so movies than TV. We, we usually agree on TV, but movies, I mean, Oppenheimer, Insidious, Blue Beetle, we disagree on parts of those movies, I would say. Um, even, even if we both like the movie, one of us may like the other more, but we can still discuss it because that's how the world should work. Uh, instead of just getting enraged with people <laughs> online, I swear people always, um, people always just take it too far online. And I don't know why it's like, uh, I'm out here sharing an opinion and other creators out here, they share their opinions and people get so up in arms about it. And I just never understood why. Um, all right, let's see. We can get into some questions, by the way. I, this doesn't have to just be about this. We'll, we'll do the thing where I get into some questions as well. Uh, I did. Okay, let's address this. Did you hear the MCU might be rebooting after Secret Wars? I saw there was like a rumor. I take it with a grain of salt. That Secret Wars could soft reboot the MCU, meaning bring an end to this current era and have characters be recast, possibly. And like Iron Man, Cap, all these people recast, maybe. And I don't know if I buy it. Obviously, the MCU has to... You, you can't... You know, you gotta have Iron Man around and Captain America around eventually. They're these big-name heroes, Hulk. But I'm. it's fresh on a lot of audiences' minds, and they have to do it right. They have to do it right. I mean, eventually, I think we'll get another Iron Man movie. And eventually, we'll get another, like, Steve Rogers' Captain America movie. But now is not the time. I think that's that's next decade's issue. Uh, right now, the MCU is still running, and, and they got to round it out. I think Secret Wars won't end it because we haven't even begun with the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. So I disagree with this. I disagree. I think the MCU is just going to put an, a bigger emphasis on X-Men and Fantastic Four moving forward, and that will be the MCU. X-Men, Fantastic Four, their battles, their stories. You know, I think it's time for Thor, for Strange, 
uh, all these other characters to have closure through the end of Secret Wars, maybe. And then, you know, we got Spider-Man who will always be around. And then, you know, X-Men and Fantastic Four and whoever you want to introduce. But it's time to sort of move on from Iron Man and Cap for a long time. So we'll see what happens. Most anticipated move for the rest of 2023. So I have a video dropping today, today with it. It's my top 10. Like after this, it'll be up like probably an hour or so after this. And I don't want to reveal it because of that. But Dune is on the list. I'll say that much. Um, I've never seen the Samurai turn pretty. Never seen it. All right. Fair enough, Movie Maniac. I'll, um, ooh, haven't seen Oppenheimer. I highly recommend it personally. Highly recommend personally. What's your go-to movie to watch during the summer? Well, I don't watch it every... Well, actually, there's a few. I'll just give you a few. Jaws in July, specifically on the 4th of July, is a great one. Let me take a sip of water. Days and Confused is a really fun summer movie. I would watch that year, like, at the near the end of, like, high school days, back in the day. That's a great movie to watch in the summer. So is Jaws. Um... Those two are like big summer movies for me. A movie like Super Bad, even. I don't, again, these aren't go. I usually don't have a movie I'm like, oh, I got to watch it this summer. The one is Jaws, I guess. My go to are like, hey, it is summertime. Jaws is the must watch of the summer for me. At least once I try to get to that in the summer. So I would say that is the case. All right. Am I seeing a movie Sunday for Cinema Day? Let me adjust my seat real quick. I'm a little slouch let me kind of relax my back a little bit hold on all right that's better hold on there we go all right um i don't know i don't know yet i may we'll see maybe gran turismo because i don't think i'm going to be seeing gran turismo uh thursday anymore something came up so i i don't know possibly but i also don't want to go if there's going to be a lot of people there who go and they're like, Oh, it's $4. And they act like fools. I, I don't know if I want to put up with that. So probably not actually just because people don't know how to behave in the theater, especially when there's deals, it brings out the worst people who just don't care. They're like, Oh, it's $4. Let's just act like idiots in the theater. Okay. Looking through some, for some questions or something here. You guys can start, uh, Asking just any questions now, and I'll transition into a bit of a Q and A. It seems like the consensus was Oppenheimer, Blue Beat, or excuse me, the consensus was Oppenheimer's Across the Spider Verse, Guardians Three were the top three of the summer, and that's hard to argue with. I forgot about Asteroid City. I totally missed that one. I didn't check that out. Um, Inception is my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Guardians 3 or Across the Spider-Verse? I gotta go Guardians 3. I really do. I ride with that movie. It is, um, it's such a beautiful conclusion. And I say this a lot, but I mean it. It's a movie that it brings out so many emotions. Like I genuinely cry when I watch that movie. So I have to, I have to place that one over Across the Spider-Verse. As great as Across is, Guardians 3 is a special movie. It really, it's a conclusion to, in, in many ways, it's like on the level of Endgame of being a conclusion, right? So I have to pay respect to it. And Guardians 3 is a fantastic movie. I haven't revisited it since theaters. Uh, I need to, but it's it's a great, great movie. All right, I'm scrolling through the chat here. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Where was I? I lost my spot. You guys know me. You guys know how I am. By the way, if you're in here, hit that like button. I know we got 60 people in here, so hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't, and go check out the podcast channel. That's linked down below, a podcast with myself and my girlfriend, Cam. And Super Chat's the way to go to guarantee I get to your question, comment, concern. I almost just knocked my monitor over. Uh, but yeah, let's keep going. Ba -bum -bum. Most overrated movie of the summer is Oppenheimer. JK. Well, I disagree regardless. <laughs> uh, hey, Chris, what's a big goal you want to achieve with your channel by the end of 2023? Not related to subscribers. Well, welcome in, Ellie. I hope you're doing well. It's a good one. Good question. I'd say... Um, 
you know, I don't really know what uh what what I would say for that. I hope to watch I hope to get out as many Stranger Things videos as possible because I miss Stranger Things. It's it's what I'm truly passionate about and I I I miss talking about it. So I think that's definitely something I want to incorporate more is like Stranger Things content. Get out more. That's a goal not related to subscribers or anything, just content wise is more Stranger Things content. Um and that's a big one, honestly. Try and and keep Stranger Things in the discussion on a more frequent basis because it is a huge part of, of the media that I love. It's a huge part of this channel, I feel. So Stranger Things content is a huge goal of mine. Um, in terms of other things, I want to get shine more light on the podcast as well, which if you guys haven't, I'm going to put the link in the chat. If you guys haven't, let me put the link there. Uh, subscribed, you should check it out. It's a, it's a podcast with myself and my girlfriend, Cam, trying to create more content around that. It's a big goal for me to do. I've been having fun doing sort of break videos, but like videos where I will um, chop up something from the podcast and share it on YouTube. So that way I can, you know, uh, uh, share it on Filmstock, but also be like, hey, go check out the full episode over here where you guys can go watch the full thing there. I feel like that's brought some attention to the podcast, and I'm going to continue doing that as well. So those are two content-based goals I have for the rest of this year. My nose will not stop itching for some reason. Sorry. Anyway. All right. What is going on with Star Wars? Seems like it's going to fail. Um, they haven't been in theaters since 2019. That's a big issue. Star Wars needs to be in theaters probably, but I have seen the first two episodes of Ahsoka and I'll have a review dropping tomorrow. So everyone stay tuned for that. But, um, I have a quick reaction and I, I'm, I'm on board so far. I'll say that much. I'm on board so far. So it could be the case of a Disney plus show giving false promises, but I am on board with the vision of Ahsoka and check that out. I am recommending it so far. <laughs> My nose, I don't know why it's so itchy right now. The Nun 2 will definitely be my favorite movie of the year. I'm going to watch it. That's one of the next movies I'll see in theaters. I got to finish out the series of Conjuring films. I've seen the trilogy, and I took a bit of a hiatus from movies in general. But I got to watch The Nun 1, and then the Annabelle films, and The Curse of La Llorona, and that way I can maybe do a big old ranking of all the Conjuring universe films when the next one drops. But does anyone really care is the question I ask. I don't know. We'll find out. Does anyone really care about that movie or, or universe? We'll see. I haven't seen TMNT. I've heard good things about Mutant Mayhem, though. I've, I've heard it's delightful. I just have never checked it out because, honestly, I've never um, seen a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. I know that's crazy to say. A lot of people are probably like, what? I've just never seen it. So um, it had to be It had to be said that I've never seen a... Mission Impossible, or excuse me, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. All right, where was I in the chat? I have never seen The Summer I Turned Pretty, for those that continue to ask. That's an interesting point, Connor, about the uh, true stories. Uh, I think people always like to go see two stories. And that's why I'm curious about this dumb money movie coming out later this year about the GameStop stocks. Move, main gamer says top movies of the year include Oppenheimer, Mission Impossible. All valid points right there. All very valid points right there. Do I think Ethan Hunt will die in the next Mission Impossible? No way. They're not going to kill Ethan Hunt. I thought maybe they will, but I just don't see them ending the series like that. I, I, I don't know. No way. No way. I don't think the, Tom Cruise would want them to kill off his character. West Side Story, which one? Was it the original or the new one? Either way, both movies are awesome. I agree, Double B edits. Mads Mikkelsen is a great villain role, and he played it so well. I just wish that his character had not only more screen time, but more depth. Um, he, there was so much promise set up early on, but he he definitely was wasted as a villain. However, he played it well. With what he was given, he played it well. Indiana Jones or Star Wars? If you have to pick which one, um, and oh shoot, so if I have to pick just one, that's so hard. I feel like there's an abundance 
of Star Wars content, and there's such a, a limited amount of Indiana Jones films that I almost have to go Star Wars. As much as I love Indiana Jones, I almost have to go Star Wars just because, you know, there are things I hate in Star Wars, but there's things I adore, like the original trilogy, The Mandalorian Seasons 1 and 2, Clone Wars, the prequels, uh, Rebels, uh, uh, Andor. You know, there's so many great pieces of media within Star Wars, the video games, like, I feel like I would I would have to say Star Wars, but I love Indiana Jones. Again, I'm looking at an Indiana Jones shrine, essentially, to my left right now. Um, I adore Indiana Jones, but I may have to go Star Wars at the end of the day. And it's so difficult, but I... Uh, mm, it stinks, but I think I gotta go Star Wars. There's just too much greatness to not pick it. I love Indiana Jones, though. All right. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to find some questions. A lot of these are just repeat questions. I'm trying to find some original ones that spice it up a little bit. Okay. Are you going to see Gran Turismo soon? I Again, I don't know if I'm going to get to it in theaters or not. I have some things going on later this week. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I If I see the movie, I'll just do an out-of-theater reaction for it. I won't have a full review or anything. Uh, but we'll see. I, I'm putting a pin in it. We'll see. See how this weekend turns out. I love Baby Driver. I've, I've seen it. I love it. I hope more people decide to see Haunted Mansion because I personally love it. That's another summer movie that kind of went under the radar. I enjoyed the movie. I don't know if I'll watch it again. Maybe in October if I want like some family friendly spooky vibes in a movie. Um, but I don't know. I I I thought the movie was all right. You know, I thought it was fine. That's the way I describe it. I enjoyed it for what it was, and and as a fan of Disney and the ride, it was cool to see them with all those Easter eggs and, and explore that world for a bit. Uh, it was surprisingly funny, but other than that, yeah, I didn't love it, but I, I'm glad you did, Abby. Let's see. We have a super chat from Zach. Curious, do you do film stock full time? As of right now, yes, this is my main uh, source of income. My main job is film stock. Um, I do some other things as well, but film stock is my main thing at this moment in time. And I will continue to build that and um, put my all into it for as long as I as I can. So I love doing YouTube and, and y'all's support goes a long way. So thank you for the super chat, Zach. I, uh, I do appreciate that a lot. Um, have you ever considered doing like percentages or out of 100 ratings or do you just like star ratings the most? I don't really like the 100% thing, to be honest with you. I don't. I don't like the 100% thing because it's just so... It's such a, it's such a large scale that what is the difference between 92% and 93%? I don't really think there is one. Uh, now, you could just say, oh, that's no different than a 10.1, or excuse me, a 9.2 or 9.3, which, fair. I just like the star. I used to use out of 10, personally. I really like the five star thing ever since I got letterbox and kind of adapted that I like the five star, uh, out of five because I, it's just a little simpler. It's a little simpler. I don't need, you know, uh, someone's more likely to give a movie. Here's what I'm trying to say. I'm more, so if a movie's not great, I don't know, three out of five or like a six out of 10, like a six out of 10 is like a 60%, which in the, in, in the grand scheme of things is not awful. Um, but I just feel like with the t out of 10 scale or percentage, people would be like, Oh, the movie was awful, but it's like only, but it's a six out of 10. And it's like with that out of 10 scale, people don't go as low on it ever. Like a four out of 10 people might not go, but a two out of five people are more likely to go to. That's the same thing, technically. Does that make sense? That's kind of the way I look at it. I just, I prefer the star thing. Ever since Letterbox, I've picked up out of five, and I enjoy it a lot more. Also, the Schmoes, Schmoes No, Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, they did, um, uh, they did out of five when I watched them, and I honestly, I liked that a lot. I liked that a lot. So the one thing I've never done is letter grades. I'm not a teacher. I'm not grading something. I'm not I'm not out here. <laughs> Letter grades are just, I don't know. I'm not a professor. You know, I'm not grading a paper. Um, I just like out of five, especially because of Letterboxd. So, so shout out Letterboxd. Uh, thoughts on No Hard Feelings? I really agree with both the things you just said. Very, very funny. Very well done movie. 
it's um it's surprisingly heartfelt i'll say that much i i did not expect to be moved that much by that movie it's funny absolutely but there's uh certain scenes where i'm like damn this is heavy emotionally i did not expect that so i dig it personally have i seen the movie clue i've never seen the movie clue i've seen clueless but i've never seen clue um did show disappoint a blue beetle uh absolutely not he he no no he was amazing blue beetle show Maraduini was the best part of blue beetle his performance was amazing just like he is in cobra kai uh the movie itself just disappointed me i'm very excited for cobra kai season six i was watching the cobra kai season five bloopers on youtube today i'm ready i i need that that uh franchise i guess that series back in my life i need it i miss it All right. Water break. I got you. Absolutely. I'm going to watch Saw X. I know people call it Saw 10. I call it Saw X just because it sounds cooler. I know it's the Saw 10, Saw X, whatever. Uh, of course, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, I've seen every Saw movie. I'll see this one. And I'm, I'm, I'm very pumped for it. In fact, I have a video, like I've mentioned, it's dropping later today. But um, you guys should check it out. And it's my top 10 most anticipated fall movies. And Saw X is on the list. It's on the list. Possibly on the list. Uh, by the way, just put the link to the podcast down below. Go check it out. Go subscribe. If you haven't, I always plug it over there. We have fun doing that. We just hit 1,000 subscribers. So check it out if you have not. Favorite Spielberg movie? Um, Raiders. It's always probably going to be Raiders. Are you excited for the creator in a rebel moon? I forget about the creator coming out. That is uh this month upcoming rebel moon. Eh, I don't know. I'm not really pumped for it. I'm not a crazy big Zack Snyder fan. I don't know. I know a lot of people are, and he's got his cultists that are, <clears throat> there are Zack Snyder fans. And then there are Zack Snyder cultists. The cultists are the one who attack other people online and degrade every other actor or, or DC thing without Zack Snyder involved for no reason. Um, I, I, I'm not terribly excited for either of these. I don't like to lie on the channel or put on a, uh, what is it? A performance saying, Oh, I'm, I'm pumped for, it. I wouldn't say I'm excited for something if I'm not, I'm not really excited for either of these. I, I want to buy in on this creator hype. And I know other people have hyped it up and said, Oh, you guys, you know, watch out for it. But the, uh, the trailer didn't really do much for me visually. Cool. It does look realistic. It looks awesome. But I, I'm not really moved by the story and Rebel Moon. I know nothing about except that Zack Snyder is directing it, and that doesn't give me the most confidence. So I'm not terribly excited for either of these movies. All right, Chris, what reboot would you want to see? Me personally, I think Disney should reboot The Wizard of Oz because Oz is a gr Oz the Great and Powerful is a good movie. I watched that Oz the Great and Powerful movie years ago, and I barely remember it, but I have seen The Wizard of Oz. What movie would I, what, what reboot would I want to see? I don't know about Wizard of Oz. They're like, you've already got the Wicked play and all the iterations of that coming to film. So they probably would never touch the original Wizard of Oz movie. Um, a reboot I would actually want to see. You know what? Huh. I'm looking at my Blu-ray shelf, trying to think of like 80s or, or 70s, 80s, 90s movies that could get rebooted. I wouldn't mind like a Smokey and the Bandit reboot. If anyone knows what that is, it's like a... Uh, it's a goofy movie with um with Burt Reynolds, but something like a more serious Smokey and the Bandit where it's it's basically like this big car chase, but they could do a, a serious version of Smokey and the Bandit, I think, for sure. Um I would I would be okay with that, honestly. All right. Let's do a speed round. Speed round commencing in three, two, one. Hot take. I don't understand the hate multiverse madness gets. I just don't like the movie all that much. And uh, I have a bunch of reviews diving into why I get the hate personally. What is the worst movie of 2023? Megan. Megan. I just looked into the camera. I hope that scared somebody. Hot take. BVS is better than the Batman. Garbage take. Uh, who is an actor that could play Silver Surfer? Evan Moss Backrack, who plays Richie, is speculated to possibly be playing the role. I wouldn't be opposed to that, but I'd also like to see him play the thing at the same time. The best X-Men movie? With X-Men in the title, Days of Future Past. Uh, in the universe, probably Logan. Abby says, I might have to see Barbie again on Sunday. We'll go for it. Most underrated summer movie. Good question. I'm going to say Hard Feeling off the top of my head. Take the cake for that uh, For that title. Is superhero fatigue real? And uh, to a certain degree, yes, it is. 
We get multiple superhero projects from big movies to shows every year, and only a few of them end up being actually great. And with Blue Beetle, I really felt it. It was just, uh, uh, I was talking to my buddy over earlier today, and like, it, he made a good point. He was almost like, it was like the template was the superhero formula template was there and they just had to fill in the blanks and it's like, yep, yeah, pretty much. So I, uh, I do think super fatigue is real at times, but then it, it, it proves it's not when we get original stories, um, which I, you know, I dig, I prefer Oppenheimer or Top Gun Maverick and Oppenheimer is a better movie. Top Gun Maverick's more rewatchable and, and probably more enjoyable favorite movie trilogy, the original star Wars trilogy. I think it'll always be that way to be honest. um, Guardians, uh, absolutely. Guardians three is a perfect, perfect, perfect movie. I love it. Who had the best character arc in season five, Johnny or Daniel? Uh, that's tough. Mm, I may go Daniel, but it's really tough off the top of my head. I'd have to rewatch. I'm going to really fully make that decision, but Daniel went through some stuff. That's all I'm going to say. With Loki season two coming out, it's bringing me back to the 3 a.m. watch parties. What a time that was. What a what a period in time those 3 a.m. watch parties were. I'll never forget them. That was something else. <laughs> uh, what do you think about Stranger Things season five being pushed back to summer 2025? Well, there's no set in stone release date, so it was never really set to to um, to have a release date. So I don't know if this is really true or not because it never had a release date. They haven't even started filming. So if we got it in summer 2025, that would be amazing <laughs> because that would be earlier than i actually think we will i'm thinking 2026 unfortunately keep watch burn guardians 3 no way home and iron man i will keep um iron man i will damn actually this is this is really hard i'll keep no way home um because i think it's uh, this has nothing to do with my ranking of the movies this is just off the top of my head uh, all right, so whatever my recent MCU ranking was doesn't really matter compared to this and how I'm answering this in this moment in time. No Way Home's the most rewatchable, so I'll put that as keep. I'll watch Guardians 3 and burn, I guess, Iron Man, which is wild because I have been a champion of that movie. It's like my third favorite, but for, for whatever reason right now, I guess it is getting burned, but that doesn't feel right. So actually, no, it's not getting burned. I don't know. <laughs> I'm watching, I'm keeping all of them because they're all amazing movies. Have I played Jedi Fallen Order? I have. I have not played the sequel yet, and I need to. I, I need to. Um, that is, is something that came out in April, which is crazy to me, and I just still haven't played it. But I've been, I just, I've been occupied. You know, I never think to play it. So I want to Twitch stream it. Um, it's currently the donation goal on my Twitch when I do Twitch streams, but I have not played the sequel yet, and I need to. I really need to. All right. Let's continue the speed round. I tried to take a breather real quick. <laughs> Again, go subscribe to the Unusual Couple podcast if you guys haven't already. Myself and my girlfriend, Cam, we do uh, weekly podcast episodes over there. It's a lot of fun talking movies, TV shows, fandoms, all that different stuff. We got Jack in the house. What's good, Jack? Mission Impossible 7 is my number one. Oh, I've seen it twice. I'm excited to watch it in the comfort of my own home without distractions. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm um, probably with a pretty much a commentary track as well. That should even add some fun to it too. Uh, which upcoming Rachel Zegler project are you more excited for? Hunger Games, Hunger Games, uh, Battle of Songbirds and Snakes. I'm excited for both, but I'm more excited for the Hunger Games movie. I plan to actually read the book prior to. Um... All right. <laughs> Finished Invincible last night. Let's just say the bus scene with Ami Man is one I'll never forget. Yeah, I'm rewatching Invincible before the new season later this year, and I know what you're talking about, and yes, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I will be playing Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. I'm looking forward to it. That'll be in October when that comes out. I'll probably do a Twitch stream. Um, this is a pretty good point. I, I guess it's just a thing when you're talking, your nose it. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the vibrations from the sound of your lips moving. It like itches your nose, but that's a good point. My nose was, it's historically has itched when I talked before. So who knows? Favorite Stranger Things season has got to be four right now, at least. Favorite Tom Cruise movie. 
hard not to say Top Gun Maverick or, you know, any of the, the Mission Impossible series as a whole in terms of favorite. My favorite Mission Impossible movie, though, is Fallout. Uh, keep watch burn. I don't want to answer that one. That's too difficult. <laughs> okay. I do need to watch the Cornetto trilogy. I'm a slacker, McFly. I'm a slacker. Um, what's keeping Temple of Doom from a four and a half out of five on Letterboxd? Good question. So Temple of Doom's at a four because it it drags for about the first hour of the movie. There is no clear sense of direction in the movie. There is this meandering, goofy scene at a um, dinner party where there's these like wacky foods being thrown around. The movie's just really unserious for a bit. And then eventually the main adventure kicks in, but there's really no adventure in the film for about half of it when you go back and rewatch it. It's got a great opening, but there's a 40 minute block where. Uh, I could do without it entirely. I have to factor that in. So it's four out of five, really good movie, but it's not perfect. And it's my third favorite Indiana Jones film. Siege of Mandalore is my answer to the best Clone Wars arc. Hard not to pick that one. Uh, out of 10, Blue Beetle. I don't know. Five and a half, maybe. Sounds about right. Uh, let's see. My nose again, trying to itch up on me. Um, what is going on here? Oh, I lost my spot. That's why <laughs> I was like, "Where, where's the, where am I?" Uh, do you think Batman Two will make over a billion? No. For uh, maybe depends on if they if, if Joker if Kyogen's Joker is the main villain and they market a Joker Batman dynamic that could be the key to a billion dollars. Uh, but I don't know if they will. I don't know if they want. I don't know if they want to save Joker for the third film or the fourth film potentially. Um, we'll see. I would say. Hmm. I would say likely no. The first one did $770 million, but it did go to HBO Max a month later, and it was a little, you know, the pandemic was still kind of going on. So if that movie had had come out under normal circumstances, maybe it would have done more than a billion. I'll say it does like $800 million, though. That's still good. Still damn good, honestly. We got a super chat from Zach. Keep watch burn. Megan. Space Jam, A New Legacy in 65. Okay, three stinkers. I think I'm going to burn Space Jam, A New Legacy. That movie's uh, unwatchable. I think I was a little kinder to it at one point because I was like, ah, it's, if I was a kid, I might have enjoyed it. But even then, I don't want to have to endure this movie. It was so, it was, I can't watch that ever again. That's going to be burnt. Now I have to keep one and watch one. I think I'm going to keep 65 as as boring and lifeless as that movie is. And I'm going to watch Megan. But 65 is so short that if I do keep it around and I have to watch it a few more times in my life, it's so short, it won't really matter. I can fall asleep to it. Megan was so cringe to me. I was like, oh, this movie's bad. 65 oh, was bad, but maybe the most watchable of the three, I guess. What a rushed movie. What a laughably rushed movie, though. God. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks for the super chats, though, Zach. All right. Where was I? You'll never see me coming. Favorite mystery movie? Um, Mystery movie. Whenever I hear that, I, I kind of associate mystery with Knives Out. The first Knives Out's a really good movie, so I'll say that off the top of my head. I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot, though. All right. Will I be watching Jurassic Park in theaters for its 30th? Is that this upcoming weekend? I think it actually is. Maybe I would go, if 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 that was $4 at Cinema Day, I might go do that, actually. Let me look this up. Um, It's playing in theaters on Thursday, technically. And Friday, technically. Interesting. Very interesting, Dr. Jones. Um, potentially. 
potentially. Um, I'll leave it at that. What type of shelf do you use to display your Blu-rays? I don't remember what it's called, but I got it from Best Buy online, and it's like a tower shelf, something along those lines. It's a tower shelf. Um, I got it years ago now, 2017 maybe, and uh, it's one of my favorite purchases. I don't know how long I'll hang on to it because it's a behemoth <laughs> that takes up a lot of space if I were to like move into another room or something. Um, and I don't know, to be honest, I mean, I guess I probably will hang on to a lot of my movies, but a lot of my movies, uh, a lot of my movies, I don't need to own anymore. Like not a lot, but a good percentage of them. I look and I'm like, I don't need to own this one, but I like it, but I don't need to own it. There are some that I need to own, but others where I'm like, I bought this on black Friday. Cause I just wanted to impulse buy it or something. Um, but I don't know. I feel like my my collection might get smaller over time. We'll see. Am I more excited for the Harry Potter reboot or the Continental? The Continental. And I'm not even like hyped for either of those. The Continental's uh you know interesting enough premise. It's like a prequel within the John Wick world. Harry Potter reboot, I'm not excited for that at all. No one asked for that. I don't, I don't want to see that at all. So definitely the Continental. Water break, I got you. Go subscribe if you haven't to the Unusual Couple Podcast. Again, if you're in here right now, hit that like button. I have no clue how many likes we're at, but I always try and say I get to 100 likes between this and the replay. I believe it's possible. So if there's 56 of you guys in here, hit the like button if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't. And Super Chat's way to go to guarantee I get your question, comment, or concern. My nose. Favorite sports movie? Remember the Titans Supremacy. Always will be Remember the Titans. Moneyball's up there, though, and so is Miracle. Halloween or Friday the 13th? Probably Halloween. Friday the 13th, the first movie is boring as hell. Jaws or Aliens? Jaws. Do it. <laughs> All right. I didn't even realize this. Yeah, I guess there is like a Transformers animated movie coming out, and two of the OG Avengers are in the voice cast, right? So that's, that's interesting. Um, I probably won't watch the movie, so it doesn't matter, but I'm sure they'll, excuse me, I'm sure they'll do well with their roles. Who do you prefer, Bale or Pattinson? Pattinson. I, I like Christian Bale's Batman movies a lot, but the more I think about it, the more I'm like, he's just, he's not the best Batman. Um, I, I thought walking out of the theater, I was like, Pattinson's the best. The first time I saw the movie, I literally was like, Pattinson's the best. Uh, and Affleck, you could argue over him. I'm not going to say outright, but we didn't get enough of Affleck. He wasn't done right. He never got a solo movie. So I think Bale over him. But uh, the more I think about it, like, there's a clear argument to be made of people when they're they're valid when they say Bale's Batman is not great. The movies are. He does that voice that's kind of annoying. I know it's iconic now, but it's kind of annoying. And from like a combat perspective, we don't really see that guy kick ass, really. Pattinson. Pattinson. Pattinson is my pick. All right. Who should play the X-Men in the MCU? Man, I had a great pick the other day for who could play Beast. I, rem I don't remember who it was off the top of my head. I think Joe Keir would be a really good Beast. Uh, but no, there's someone else who was like, oh, that'd be perfect. I don't remember who. Um, this is too difficult for me, to be honest. Um, Dylan Minnette was, I think, was actually who I think I said could play Beast. That would be cool. Um, the other X-Men, though, I don't really know, honestly. I don't. Who could play Wolverine? Beats me. Who do, who do you think they, they'll they cast? You know, that's where I'm at. Uh, shoot. Could Dacre Montgomery play Wolverine? I don't know. What do I know? Who's to say? Whoever they cast, people are going to get pissed off about. So it doesn't really matter. We're just going to have to wait and see. Um, Cody says, watch The Prestige for the first time last night. Still in shock. Great movie. Contemplating watching Inception now. I saw your Chris Nolan vid, so it influenced me to go back to his movies so thanks shout out to you chris absolutely watch inception and i'm glad that i could uh persuade you to watch the prestige christopher nolan's one of the best directors of our time and if you haven't seen any of his movies uh, of his big movies check him out any of his movies you haven't seen for that matter check him out he's a fantastic director and i think you will like every single one of them especially if you like the prestige you'll like others inception's my favorite if that's uh if that's worth anything to you inception's my favorite highly recommend it all right, let's see. 
Uh, hot take: The Boys is better than every Marvel movie and show. I don't know about that movie. I don't know about that show. There's an argument to be made there, but movie, it's really good, but not that good. Not like on that level. It's also hard to compare movies and shows. Do you think it would be cool if the rumors are true that the Batman two villain is Clayface? It would be really bizarre. <laughs> to see Clayface, who I know from like the Lego games and as this sort of goofy character and see a, a, Ma a grounded Matt Reeves take on the character would be something else to quote Toby. I believe he could do it. It would be unique compared to all the other Batman villains. And would they call him Clayface? I don't know. I don't know if that would fit the vibe of the, the Reeves verse. Beats me though. I mean, I, I have faith in Matt Reeves to pull off pretty much anything with that series with the with the upcoming batman movies um my twitch is linked down below it's at film stocked for those wondering um which did i like better talk to me or scream six i think i i gotta watch them both again but scream six i still have over it in terms of enjoyment if i had the two movies put in front of me i'm probably picking scream six nine out of ten times um, Scream Six was fresh for the for the Scream films. It changed up the location, the killers, and the kills themselves. All of those were innovative for the Scream franchise. I like that movie a lot. Haven't seen it since theaters. We'll watch it again probably in October. But Talk to Me was a very very good movie too. It just comes down to personal preference at that point. Saw or A Quiet Place. Saw. A Quiet Place is so damn good, though. The opening of that movie, I'll never forget watching in theaters how dead quiet it was. Um, have I ever walked out of a movie because it was so bad? Can't say I have, but I, I could have and I should have a few times. Don't Breathe 2, I should have walked out of. It was so bad. God, that movie stinks. Um, I don't think I have walked out of a movie, though, because it was so bad. I wish I could say I had, though, with that movie. It was it was It would have ended the suffering. <laughs> Um, favorite spider movies, knowing home, favorite Batman movie, the Batman. All right. I'll go for a few more minutes here. So make sure to fire off your questions. Super chats, the way to go to guarantee I get your question, comment concerns. Also a big way to help support me and the channel. Anything goes a very, very long way and hit the like button. If you guys are in here now or on the replay and stay tuned, I have a video dropping later. I'll go for a few more minutes. Um, I did hear about this, Elliot. I heard that they're dropping Loki, Mando, Seasons 1 and 2, and WandaVision on Blu-ray Steelbook, which is an interesting move. Um, it's, I'm surprised it took them this long to do it, and I also believe they're doing it because they need money, and the strike's going on. They're like, oh, this is another way to make money. That's kind of my thought process there, but I will, I will refrain from buying them just because they're on Disney+. Plus. I know that uh, that's kind of anti-physical media in a way, but I don't know if I can justify buying television physically unless it's not on a streaming service anymore because it is so much easier to access on a streaming service. The, the I mean, imagine you're watching The Mandalorian on disc and you, you get to episode four and you finish episode four and you got to get up and change the disc and all that. And it's not going to roll right into the next episode. You got to go to the disc menu. It's so much easier on streaming the the format of it all. So uh, for TV, I've always been a big streaming person. That's where it's literally originated on streaming. You know, I don't really want to get the physical copy of it. Now, I would, I would consider the Mandalorian season one and two, but just because the steelbooks look cool, not to actually watch. I would literally just be buying it to put on the shelf and be like, this is. That's the case with a lot of physical media, though. I mean, I mean, I I would buy it because I love the design. And nine times out of ten, if if it's a TV show, I'm never going to watch the TV show. I have the Breaking Bad box set over there. I'm like, I'm going to watch Breaking Bad on Netflix if I watch it again uh, anytime soon. So it's it's tough. It's tough. Meep, hello. Uh, <laughs> oh well, I hope you enjoy Blue Beetle. Most um, I already answered that. Well, I appreciate it. I know a lot of you guys have been sending your congratulations. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, I'll put the link right here. Oh, the link must have expired. It's in the link. It's in the chat somewhere, or I'll put it in there again, actually. 
uh, go subscribe to the podcast channel. We have a lot of fun over there. Check it out. We got like 34 episodes all time. So out if it proposed, there we go. Link down below. Okay. Um, what, what are your thoughts? What is the next Christopher Nolan movie I want is essentially the question. I would love to see him do a James Bond movie. It's time for him to do a James Bond movie. I think that's even what he wants. So give him a Bond film, a one-off Bond film. That would be pretty cool. What's the best season of Breaking Bad? I like season five the best. Season four is up there as well. My favorite character is a toss-up between multiple. Um, favorite, it's either Jesse or Saul. Water break, I got you. Cheers. I'll drink to a cheers of water. Extra with the super chat. Thank you, extra. I like the name. It's my favorite type of gum is, is the extra long-lasting one. Polar ice, that's the go-to flavor. Um, have you ever watched True Blood on HBO? And if so, what'd you think about it? I personally think it's Game of Thrones level good. I've never watched True Blood, but you bring that up and I go, I remember seeing the marketing for this all the time. Um, I remember seeing like, va it's about vampires, right? And I remember seeing those posters. And then I believe when I would go to the theater, they would, you know how they do like that, uh, what's it called? Newbie or something now where they like preview movies before and like shows. There was like a featurette on a season of True Blood for some reason, like trying to promote people to go watch the show on HBO. I've never watched it, but is it worth watching? If so, I can add it to my TV watch list because I have a long expansive television watch list that I'm trying to work my way through chipping away at it. And, uh, it feels like it's in, in, insurmountable at times. Like I'll never be able to conquer the TV watch list. There's always going to be a new show coming out and there's always going to be another show that I discover that someone says you got to watch. So, um, I've never seen it, but the fact that you say it's Thrones levels good, come on, that's high praise. That has me excited to at least maybe check it out one day down the line. Um, but I can't say that I've seen it as of now, but I do appreciate the super chat. Um, and thank you guys as always, you know, for sending in super chats and then your support goes a long way. Zach with the super chat. Thank you very much, Zach. Appreciate it. If Nolan does do bond, that'll keep him busy for the next 10 years because, you know, people will claim for a trilogy and the hype of me on him. that is true. So it's sort of, uh, got its pros and cons. Obviously I would be totally down with a Nolan Bond trilogy, but at the same time, that's 10 to 12 years of us not getting any original Nolan movies, or is it because he was able to make movies in between the dark Knight trilogy during the dark Knight trilogy from Oh five to 2012, we got prestige in 2006. We still got inception in 2010. Come on. He can still do. If he, if he, you know, if he does say, 2026, 2030, and 2033. Sounds insane to say those years out loud, by the way. If he does that, he can still get an original movie out in 2028 and maybe like 2031. So we can get five Nolan films over the course of 10 to 12 years. I think it's doable. So I, I do agree it would keep him busy, but at the same time, he was busy during the Dark Knight trilogy and he still made some other films, you know, some bangers. The Prestige and Inception during the Dark Knight trilogy run. If he does that, I'm about to make a statement right here. If Nolan makes a Bond trilogy and he makes one or two more movies remotely as good as Oppenheimer, remotely as good as, as the Prestige Inception, anything like that, in between, and we get three Bond films and two originals over the course of, let's call it 12 years, that man solidifies himself as the GOAT. Is it even up for debate at that point? I don't know. I'm excited to see whatever Nolan has in store. Whatever Nolan does will probably be my number one most anticipated movie for any year from here on out, after, after Oppenheimer. I mean, the man is a god when it comes to making films. And um, I'm I'm here for Bond. I, man, you got me excited, Zach. I love that. I love that. I, I'm honestly, I'm clamoring for a Bond movie now from him. And who's playing Bond in that trilogy? We'll have to wait and see. But my God, I can only imagine how great it would be. The I mean, have you guys seen Tenet? Inception? Come on. Come on. It's even his dream. He said he would love to do a Bond movie. He would be perfect. Whew, I got chills thinking about it. That's what I want. That would re-spark Bond after the Craig run. And it doesn't, oh my God, it would be so good. It would be so good. Need it. Need it. Again, appreciate the super chat, Zach. 
All right. Um, we'll keep this thing going. If you guys keep it coming with the questions in the super chats, we'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. Hit that like button again. If you guys are there, it's five o'clock where I am. It's five o'clock somewhere. All right. Let me check how many likes we're currently at so that I can continue to set a realistic goal for the stream. 71 likes. Hit that like button. If you guys are in here, help me get to hundred likes. Is it even possible? Let's defy the odds. <laughs> All right. Now, where was I before the super chat? Um, what's up? Just finished day one senior year of high school. I hope that went well. Enjoy the time. And um, senior year can be fun and stressful, but it's all going to be okay at the end. Remember, this too shall pass. Um, I definitely skipped a round of it in the chat, so I'm going to back up just a little bit. This is where I was. I'm going to take another water break. You can never go wrong with too many water breaks. What's your favorite piece of artwork in your movie room? Damn good question here. Um, so I have some on the ground over there. I'm ashamed I haven't framed them yet. And that's my answer. They're not, they're not, uh, they've, they were in my vlog. If you guys go watch my vlog of Dallas, San Exo Dallas, there's a, there's some pieces of art, one of them from Stranger Things, one of them from Cobra Kai with signed by William Zabka, the other from the Raimi trilogy. And that might take the cake for me. It's like Toby's face and Goblin's face fighting. I want to custom frame that so bad. It's just now is, is, I don't know how, I'm not, a, I don't know how to custom frame things. I'm being honest. I could go, go to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I've done it there, but they like charge a boatload. But the guy who I bought it from the, at the vendor, he was like, um, Here's a dude that, that does it for cheap. I went to the website and I like haven't figured it out. So I might have to call or get in contact with somebody, but I have a vision. I have a vision where I get these two, they're like panoramic size, not like huge, but they're panoramic size. So they're like, you know, long horizontal. Horizontal, yeah. Anyway, Spidey, Goblin, Matt. So like they're in the same frame with like a Spidey themed Matt. So there's like webbing in a black frame and that that would be like a piece of artwork that i would cherish for a long time so that's my favorite piece of artwork i would go pick excuse me i would go pick it up from over there but i don't want to bend it and i don't want to yeah that's honestly why i don't want to bend it but i i have it over there that's that pile of artwork i have on my floor that's my favorite it's on my floor so i really care about it right <laughs> uh jay lewis says jurassic park or jaws jaws I'm, i love jaws i'm big on jaws big jaws guy um, Andrew, I'm doing good. How about yourself? Well, you said you're good. So I guess I answered my own question there. Uh, how many steel books do you have? I have, I will count them. I'm going to do this. I'm going to shine my phone flashlight over there. I'm literally going to count the spines. I have, um, one, two, three, four, five i can't do this it's too far to see i'm gonna i'm gonna round i'm gonna just guess i have like 30 that's a probably a high probably that's probably accurate 20 to 30 steelbooks for me that would be my guess right now 20 to 30 steelbooks somewhere in that ballpark maybe more maybe less by five or ten if i had 40 that would be impressive i don't know if i have 40 um cody with the super chat thank you cody this is your sign to watch Inception. Um, do you think if Nolan makes that Bond movie and it's it's transcendent and it and it's transcendent, uh, do you think any director could pass him up on the goat list? I am. Oh, he's already the goat. If he makes a Bond film, call it just one Bond film, and it's amazing. I don't know. I mean, he solidifies himself on the Mount Rushmore of all time directors. Obviously, if he wins the Oscar for Oppenheimer, that already catapults him to a high high status frankly he's already at a high status but say he wins the oscar for oppenheimer that catapults him to mount, mount rushmore status almost if he makes a bond film and then does a trilogy and then makes two to five more original movies that are all amazing it's hard not to say he's the goat now you've got tarantino you've got scorsese you've got spielberg hitchcock a ton david fincher the list goes on and on right um, I would say this, if he makes a Bond film, a Bond trilogy, or just original films, he will go down as the best director 
I'm going to say it of the, uh, he'll go down as the best director of the century easily of the, of the, from 2000 and then for the next hundred years to two one zero zero, which saying that out loud actually scares me that that's a real year. Um, (laughs) he will go down as the best director of the century. If he continues at the rate he's at, and I'm talking, he he made he made what one movie in the nineties? So yes. Yes. I think he really will. I mean, he'll be it'll be insurmountable at that point. He is he is that great of a director. So thank you for the super jack, Cody. And Nolan is he's goat level. He's goat level. We know this. He's goat level. Scream over the child's play series. I've seen all the scream movies. I've seen one child's play. And if I'm comparing one to Scream One to Child's Play One, Scream blows it out of the water. Interesting little keep watch burn here. The Dark Knight Rises I'm keeping. That's the most rewatchable of the three, um, and it's it's got some of the best uplifting scenes in movies. So I'd keep The Dark Knight Rises. I'd probably watch Blackberry and burn Babylon just because ba- Babylon's really, really long. It's a five out of five type movie for me. Like I think that it's made that well, but Blackberry was a great quick hitter watch. And that's just how I'm feeling right now. All right. I think Affleck's Batman didn't get it. Yeah. It's unfortunate. They really mishandled him from the beginning. And it's one of the biggest missed opportunities ever. I would say. What cameos will be in Loki season two? I'm not even thinking that way. We're gonna get some. We got some cameos in the first season. Like um Lady Sif was in was in an episode of Loki season one. I would say we'll get variants of, of somebody. I would not be too shocked if we saw Thor. Like I think we'll get a Thor variant, Chris Hemsworth straight up. Um but at the same time, I don't know if they want to do that anymore. But I that's my guess. Thor. Robert Pattinson over Christian Bale easily, easily in terms of Batman. Best Alfred actor, easily Michael Caine. <laughs> uh, for sure. Oh, sure. All right. My nose is so itchy for no reason. Okay. What's good, Jason? Welcome in. How you doing, man? Um... Go subscribe to the podcast right here if you guys haven't already. A Newsweek Global Podcast. New episode dropping Wednesday. All right. Thoughts on Ozark? Great question, Connor. Ozark is a amazing crime drama series in the same light as Breaking Bad. And it is a... It's masterfully crafted. Jason Bateman, you guys know him as that funny dude... He is great in a serious role here. The, I mean, Ozark was like the show that I binged in like a few days when I first watched it. And I miss it. I honestly miss it. It's gone too soon. But I I'm, I have, I, I like the ending. I like where we ended. So Ozark is a win for me. It's on the Mount Rushmore of Netflix originals, I'd say. It's, it's great. Great TV. Highly recommend it. Ooh, keep watching Burn Pixar edition. I might sneeze, by the way. Um, Ratatouille up in Coco. So I'm going to keep Ratatouille. That's the most rewatchable. It's my number two Pixar film. It's my 1A, 1B, if you will. Uh, but that movie, come on. I I, I need to I need to watch that movie whenever I start to like lose faith in myself and my abilities and my, my life goal. Like It's that uplifting. I'm going to watch up because, honestly, it's so emotionally damaging after the first 10 minutes. It's never been the most rewatchable Pixar movie to me, but I love it. It's that good. It's usually high on my Pixar ranking. And then I will burn Coco, even though it hurts me to do that. Coco is so, so good. Uh, I got to burn one of them, and that's the one. Will Oppenheimer make a billion? Oh, that would be awesome if it could, like, backdoor into a billion. I don't know. I think it just crossed, like, 700 million. It's close to 750 million. I think it end, ends up around, like, 800-something million, which is impressive as hell for a R-rated biopic film to make that much money at the box office, outgrossing Fast X, outgrossing Spider-Verse 2. Power of Christopher Nolan, baby. <laughs> All right. Ooh, ooh, 
keep watching burn better call Saul game of Thrones, stranger things, keep stranger things. I'm, I'm not even sorry for that. It's my favorite show of all time. I couldn't live without it. All right. It's my number one. I'm keeping it. Now I got to watch one through and through and burn the other one. Game of Thrones is some of the best TV I've ever seen in my entire life, but knowing how it ends, I can burn it and live, live with it. Like, like it was so great. And I love the fandom. I would go to game of Thrones con. I, I'm very well versed in game of Thrones. I don't talk about it much, but I do. I love the show. The ins and outs of it, everything. Um, I'd burn it knowing how it ends. And then I would watch Better Call Saul. Fantastic TV across the board. If you're asking Cavill or Hardy for Bond, I think I would go Cavill. Hardy's a little too... A little too brooding. He's got like the swag and the suave nature to play Bond. But Cavill is just... Honestly... We all know it. Cavill's sexy. That man could play James Bond, all right? Henry Cavill, he, he, in another life, he was James Bond. I would be hyped to see him play James Bond in a Nolan film. All right. Um, Zach says, how about Nolan or Tarantino take a stab at the horror genre? Ooh. Spawn Ranch. Yeah. Spawn Ranch from Hot. Ooh. Ooh. Give me chills over here, Zach. Um, look, I would say... Of the two, I'd rather see a Tarantino horror film. We've technically, no, I think he was a writer on one of the, what was that film? Was it like from Dust to Dawn? He was like a writer on it and he might have starred in it. But that wasn't like pure horror. I never watched it, but I could I could see a Tarantino horror movie. It'd be on the campy side, I think. Uh, but he could pull it off for sure. And you you make up a good point. When I um first watched One Upon a Time in Hollywood at Spawn Ranch, I for sure thought uh, Brad Pitt, uh, Cliff Booth was going to get Dish, like dusted like shot at the end of that hall or someone was going to come out and kill him but the way he was able to build suspense you're right spawn ranch in its entirety that whole sequence was very creepy and i think tarantino i'd rather see a horror film from nolan would be more like psychological horror uh it'd be it'd be like uh just it'd be honestly it would be in the same light as like a talk to me type thing where he would try and disturb you visually with this imagery and it would be mind-bending horror in a way. So they'd be vastly different. If I had to pick one, though, I would I would uh, rather see a Tarantino horror movie, uh, just because I know the dialogue would be on point. And they would he would have he would make it like a slasher, right? So it'd be I'm thinking a scream type of movie, but the the dialogue would just be his dialogue is some of the best ever written. And it would just be, he'd make these relatable characters, which is always what's lacking in a slasher movie. Probably have some pretty smart commentary about the stupid tropes of the horror genre. So the movie would be original. And I could totally see that like a scream, a sort of a scream movie by Tarantino is almost what I want to see. I remember for a period of time that there was a uh, discussions of the Tarantino Star Trek movie. I'm kind of glad that fell through. I never really wanted that. It would have been a little too weird. And um, the R rating is it has to be R if it's Tarantino, you know? So I, uh, I would not want to see a non R rated Tarantino film. So he would definitely suit the horror genre, but Nolan as well be vastly different. Like I said, but I wouldn't mind seeing them both do horror films at some point. Um, I think every big director should take a stab at horror though. That's a good, that's a good point, Zach. See what they're made of. <laughs> All right. Take a quick water break. All right. Where the hell was I in this chat? Okay, there I was. <clears throat> Ooh, Aaron Taylor Johnson would be, that'd be a great pick. He's younger too. I would love that. Love that. That's a great choice right there. Aaron Taylor Johnson, especially after Bullet Train, Aaron Taylor Johnson might be the guy. He might be the guy. That's actually a great point, Andrew. Uh, I definitely recommend watching Oppenheimer and following just because following is so short. It's an hour and 10 minutes. You know, you could watch it like that. I mean, that's like an episode, a long episode of TV, pretty much. So I recommend it just because to see where he started. It's nothing um, too crazy good, but I recommend it to see where Nolan started and like his roots. Um, and then Oppenheimer is worth the watch. Uh, regardless, I think it's the best movie of the year. It's a technical achievement. I, I adore the movie. So what's your favorite horror movie? I always say the same three, and I'm not going to say them this time. I'm just going to throw one out randomly. Um, I'll say my favorite recent horror movie that I watched for the first time is The Conjuring. Movie's been not been able to escape my mind lately. All right. Oppenheimer has joined the five highest grossing IMAX movies of all time. I have discussing film notifications on my phone. 
What's your favorite James Bond movie as of right now from Andrew? Uh, Skyfall and Casino Royale are like one and two. I'm honestly, I usually go Skyfall, but I'm leaning Casino Royale today. It just depends on my mood. Um, I am going to watch Succession one day, I promise. It's on my TV watch list. Maybe I'll start it tonight. We'll see what happens. I can't make any promises. Sam, what's good? How you doing, Sam? Um, I've seen like a few episodes of The Walking Dead in my life, but I've never actually watched it. Would you ever consider movie nights? That would be fun, honestly. Yeah, you, you make a good point there, Abby. Um, I would consider doing that. I'd have to figure that out, the logistics of it all, but that would be a fun time for sure. Or Discord calls, like a, something like that would be fun. Ooh, you got to watch Stranger Things, Sam. It's the best show. I love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> all right. I have never seen any of the Ninja Turtles movies, so no, I hate to break break your guys' hearts. Are you going to buy the McDonald's meal for Loki Season 2? I can't say I will. <laughs> I'll watch Loki Season 2, but I don't know if I'll buy the McDonald's meal for it. But I will watch Loki Season 2. Um, wow, we've been going for an hour and 20 minutes. Time flies on these things, I swear. You guys always make them so fun. Um, let me check how many likes the stream is up to. Uh... 78 likes hit that like button guys help me get to 100 and uh super chats the way to go to guarantee i get your question comment concern um sometimes my mouth just gets so dry i gotta take a sip of water before i continue talking um uh, but no i uh i've enjoyed this let's keep going for a few more minutes let's keep going let's keep going um okay who's your favorite aunt may from the spider movies hot take it's the tasm aunt may um sally field that sounds right I, I don't know why i'm second guessing myself yeah sally field i don't know why i second guess myself sally field um oh tasm 2 when she is with peter and and he's like you are you're enough and like they both break down crying it just it's beautiful she's the best uh marissa tomei is a little too i don't know i don't dislike marissa tomei from the from the uh the the mcu i was looking for mcu there we go uh she's just never my favorite and then rosemary harris is more of a peter's a grandmother essentially i i just think that the sally field one from tasm is like the perfect uh blend of, of all of the aunt mays hello how are you epic king 886 have i watched rush hour never seen rush hour Never seen it. Best year for movies? 2010's up there. You had Toy Story 3, Inception, The Social Network, True Grit. Um, there's a lot more. Fro uh, uh, fr uh, t uh, Tangled. The list goes on and on. Um, Deathly Hallows Part 1, I want to say. 94, 90, 94, 97, 2014, 2019. Those are always ones that come to mind. I think I have a video somewhere on my channel going through that, actually. What other Cobra Kai star should get their own action movie? Ooh, I like this question a lot. And my answer is going to be Tanner Buchanan. I love Tanner Buchanan. I think he could totally carry a movie and a DC movie as Rob or Nightwing. I think that's he even has like hinted at that. I think that would be sick. That would probably be my answer is uh, it's him. By the way, Sholo should not bear any of this weight of the film's underperformance it's not his fault it's not his fault dc's track record has been crap for so long that audiences are just turned away by dc it's a new character and a lot of people don't go out to new characters or new origin stories it came out at a bad time of year august is a dead zone for movies people are going back to school also that we we're in the middle of a strike so he could not actively promote the film a lot of a lot of things, unfortunately, did not line up for this movie's success. Sholo should continue to play Blue Beetle, and I think he will be able to. Uh, I don't know if he'll get a sequel, but he will be in other films, and and he should still get opportunities as a big time actor because he does have it. He has it. I love Sholo. I just think that uh, a lot of factors, unfortunately, align for this movie to underperform. The Batman of the Dark Knight. The Batman. Hot take. College football is back, baby. Ooh, I'm ready. I need it in my blood right now. I'm ready. It is back. It's back soon. Um, week zero of the college football season is Saturday, and then the following weekend, it's going to be even better. So looking forward to it all. I cannot wait. 
Spider-Man or Batman Begins, give me Spider-Man. I love that movie. And I am, again, I had talked about the artwork I have over there. I got to get that framed. Got to go with that. Bottom three Tarantino, if you're just asking my bottom three Tarantino. Death Proof, for sure. Hateful Eight and probably, probably unfortunately Jackie Brown, even though the movie's pretty awesome. Water Break. A Tarantino superhero movie would be wild. <laughs> It'd be a wild little adventure, to say the least. Um, only time will tell regarding this. We have to watch the full show play out. Um, you guys know how Disney Plus series are. John Wick 4 is the best movie of the summer. Well, technically, it came out in March. So it was, it's one of the better movies of the year, but it, it wasn't a summer movie, technically. Bullet Train's a supremely underrated movie. What a badass action flick. I, I love it. Um, it's definitely underrated, underappreciated. Um, up to 84 likes on stream. Help me hit 100 likes if you guys are in here. Hit that like button. Super chat's way to go to guarantee I get your question, comment, concern. We'll go for like five more minutes tops here. So if you got anything you're dying to ask or you want to get a last minute super chat in, fire away. Anything goes a long way. And um, we'll go for a few more minutes here. All right. Favorite Tarantino and best Tarantino. Favorite Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, best Tarantino. I mean, Inglorious Bastards, probably. That's also like my number two, but I think his best movies, Inglorious Bastards, are Pulp Fiction. All right. Will I ever watch any TMNT movies? I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling one day, maybe. Biggest Oscar snub of the decade. So this decade, Andrew Garfield. Not winning Best Actor for Tick, Tick, Boom, and Will Smith won. Will Smith was great, but Andrew Garfield uh, should have won, and I stand by that. So I would say Garfield not winning. Um, but I do – I haven't seen – this was 2020, I think. Chadwick Boseman not winning, I heard, was a big one for Ma Rainey's uh, Black Bottom and, and Anthony Hopkins won. So that was also a sort of divisive one as well. Uh, let's see. Keep watch burn top Tom Cruise edition Top Gun Mission Impossible a few good men. Well, you didn't say Top Gun Maverick, so this makes it a little easier. Uh, I'll keep. Oh, this is actually tough. A few good men's a really good movie. Ooh, I don't know if I. Ooh, this is actually difficult. This is a hard one. Ledger forever. Okay, I'm gonna say. I will. Hmm. I'm honestly gonna watch. I'll watch Mission Impossible because I feel like I like the movie a lot, but once you watch it, the trick's sort of up. Obviously, it ends up tricking me sometimes on rewatch, but I'll watch Mission Impossible. Keep a few good men, even though I don't I haven't watched the movie in years. It's so, I have to have it. It's just I love a courtroom drama. It's a Sorkin script. I feel like when I revisit that movie, it'll skyrocket on my all-time favorite list. And I'll burn the OG Top Gun because I got Top Gun Maverick. When are you watching Gran Turismo? To be determined. I'm not sure yet. Um what are my favorite kinds of movies? I got a lot of favorites, but recently I'm really in like the corporate sort of biopic movies like Blackberry or uh, Social Network, movies like that, or sports films like Moneyball, Remember the Titans. Those are some of my favorite films of all time, easily. Oppenheimer is, you know, a true story a biopic type film that I really dig as well. Um, water Break. Cheers. Um, all right, probably going to wrap it up here very shortly. I think the last of a season one overall is one of the best seasons of TV this year. Really well done adaptation of the game, creating its own elements of the, of the story, but retaining what was really important about the game. Favorite business movie. Got to go to the social network or Moneyball. Um, do I think Stetson got robbed? No, he should not have won the Heisman in my opinion. But no one really should have last year. <laughs> it was a weird year. Um, it was a weird year, I'll say that much. For the Heisman odds. Um, but I think that's that's probably going to wrap it up. I think that'll wrap it up for this um, Film Stocked Live. What was the best summer movie? We had a great discussion early on. And then ultimately transitioned to the Q&A, as I like to do. Make it a whole mix of, of a bunch of different things. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to hit the like button if you're in here live or on the replay. Subscribe to that notification bell if you have not already. Go check out the Unusual Couple podcast. It is linked down below. Um, stay tuned for you know weekly episodes of the podcast over there. 
And that's pretty much going to do it. I got a video dropping within the next hour on the channel. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And other than that, got content coming pretty much every day. So I appreciate you guys. As always, if you were in here watching, commenting, sent in a super chat, thank you so much. It does mean the absolute world. And I will see you guys in the next piece of content. Peace.